this is Case Studio's first tutorial video, and it goes with the evolution of a tomb video. This is a more in-depth tutorial of how I made that facade. I'm using three quarter inch pink styrofoam, and I've cut out a four foot long by six inch wide piece strip of foam. And I'm gonna layer that with many pieces of foam. I think there's four all together. And you can see I'm putting the adhesive on the back of the foam and then sticking it to the previous piece and then putting a screw through the foam into the wood to hold it all together while the glue dries. And I do this four or five times to build up a, a nice thick ledge on top. It's Typhon Fast Grab FRP Adhesive. And I'll be using that on everything. Here I'm adding some small squares um, to the top of the tomb here just as a little bit of a detail. I like to put as much detail as I can into any piece that I'm working on. And this is the same foam, 3 quarter inch thick, and I cut it into 1 by 1 inch squares. You can see there I've added um, a top piece of a column, there's going to be two columns running down either side of this tomb facade. Um, those are the, the top pieces of the column, and I'm adding a little bit of uh, trim detail around there, and I'm using the uh, FRP again to adhere it to the styrofoam, and then putting a screw in to hold it in place while everything dries. Same thing on this side, adding a little bit of trim to the top of the column there. Now I'm putting the actual column in. This is again 3 quarter inch styrofoam and I've cut them into a 5 inch wide planks. And you can see that it's split down, split in the middle there. That's because this this facade wall actually um, breaks apart into two pieces so that it's easier to ship and store if you're going to be storing it. And now I'm adding the top piece of the column there. Again I'm using two layers of that styrofoam. Putting glue on and then adhering it to the previous piece, and then uh, using some screws to drill through into the wood to hold it while it dries. And I'm adding a little bit of a detail element here in the middle of the column, because um, I like the detail, and it's also to hide the seam where the walls meet. It's just a little one inch wide uh, strip, and it goes around all sides of the column. Now for the other side, I decided I wanted to do a um, piece of um, exposed uh, brick section to hide the, um, the seam in the middle. So I am taking the bricks and applying them to the um, styrofoam column there. And you'll see I add um, another layer of styrofoam to look like uh, crumbling stone or plaster that's fallen to expose the brick. You'll see in just a second when I add it. And there it is there. I'm applying the glue. And there's the uh, the other piece. Screwing it in. And you can see now the column looks like it has a crumbling base with the exposed brick underneath. And I'm now working on the letters, which I um, traced out onto some computer paper, and then just cut them out with a jigsaw. I did this beforehand, and now I'm just cleaning up some of the edges, and I'm applying them to the top of the tomb. Now for the letters, I'm actually using a um, um, a power grab adhesive. It's in like a caulking tube, a caulking gun. I'm using this because the the um, adhesion is, is much faster. It sticks a lot faster than if I were to use the FRP. And the uh, letters are so thin that I really want the hold to be kind of immediate. And they were a little bit off, so I'm having to re readjust them a little bit. 
And now you can see on the right side the column that has the exposed brick. You can see that a little better than you did in the nighttime section of this video. And you'll also see that I added another set of columns just inside those two outside columns. And I've also added a small arch piece at the very top, and that is all cut from the same 3 quarter inch styrofoam. And I used the lid of my garbage can to get that curve that you see there. Now I'm starting to kind of um, detail the piece a little bit. There's some styrofoam that's sticking out further than the edge of the wall, so I was trimming that off. And I'm adding a little bit of trim around the top, just as a detail element. And the next thing I'll start doing is carving up the styrofoam to look a little bit more like stone, like crumbling, broken stone. So you'll see that here in just a second. Yeah, I'm using my razor blade. Just kind of cutting at the edges, cutting nice big chunks out of it. Cutting off some of the edges. Trying to make it look as much like stone as I can. This is a loose piece of styrofoam here, so you can see I took my drill and put some screws in to hold it down, and I'm carving away. Just softening the edges. And I love using a blowtorch. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going to use that a couple of times, but um, I'm using a blowtorch and a spray bottle. Um, and the spray bottle has water in it, and I have that for two reasons. Uh, first of all, I like to spray the foam with the water and then hit it with a blowtorch. It makes a really cool texture. You'll see that. You can see there I'm hitting the uh, blowtorch, hitting the foam with the blowtorch. It's softening the edges and um, spraying it with the water first it makes a really cool texture. Now I'm going to make some bricks and the way that I make my bricks is kind of unusual. Um, I, I use half inch thick styrofoam and I cut it into um, three inch wide strips and then I cut those three inch wide strips into eight inch long pieces and then I split each piece in half and that's what I'm doing here. I'm splitting those 8 inch by 3 inch pieces of styrofoam in half. So I'm basically creating a brick veneer. And you can get a lot of bricks out of one sheet of styrofoam using this method. Okay, now I'm going to start applying the bricks to the, uh, to the facade. You can see I've drawn out a line there where I want the bricks to end, and I'm just trimming them up and then using my FRP to adhere them to the, to the wall. And this is going to be kind of an exposed brick section. Here we go with the blowtorch again. This is a close-up of the detail you can get using a blowtorch. Um, this is a piece of uh, brick and I've sprayed it with water and I've let the water sit for about 30 seconds and then I'm using the blowtorch to very lightly go over it and you can see the texture that it gives the brick. It's really interesting and it looks really good when it's all finished, which you'll see in just a second. That's a section of brick that's totally finished. The paint that I use to paint the brick, I use a, just regular acrylic you can find at any craft store, you'll see it there on your screen. Um, but I mix the paint with some of my mortar, which you'll see in just a second, and I also mix it with some of the, um, the um, acrylic base. So to paint the bricks, I mix the paint and some of my powdered mortar and some of my polymer base that you'll see in just a second. Now we're going to... Um, start to grout the bricks. I'm using a pastry bag like you would use to decorate a cake and I filled it with my mortar mixture um, and I'm just piping in between all of the lines, piping wherever the grout would be. And then I'm using my finger to smooth out that grout a little bit. 
because um, if you look at a, a normal brick that's been, you, you know, has the grout lines, the grout is kind of concave, and I think that's because it shrinks a little bit when it dries, but I use my finger to smooth it out. And you can already see that it's starting to look like a real, look like real bricks. And that concludes part one.